Hello everyone, so we're going to be talking about the next section, section 5-4, and this is the centroid of a triangle, or the centroid theorem. This is the, th um, I don't know if it's the third or fourth, but it's a essentially another center of a triangle that we're going to try to explore a little bit more. So, in order to find the centroid of a triangle, you have to think about what the three medians of a triangle are. And those three medians come together at the point called the centroid. So before I actually like get into it, let's remember what a median is. A median of an, in a triangle, essentially what that is, is it's if you get from the vertex to the other side of the triangle, um, the median is essentially created by like connecting the vertex to the middle of the opposite side of that triangle. So here's the vertex. If I look at this side of the triangle and I cut it right down the middle, you'll see like I kind of have these two equal parts. That's the middle. If I connect my vertex to that middle part over there, then that over there gives me the median. Same thing over here. From the vertex to the middle of that side connects together to give me the median. And of course, that's the same case for BF. So if I listed the medians, my medians are from A to E. The other median is from B to F. And the last one is from C to D. Okay? And then they all come together at this middle point called the centroid, and we just call that point B. All right? Now, as far as what the properties of this centroid are, I, this is ultimately the one that I use the most, and you'll see me use this one when answering the problems. But, you know, we like to give you guys different perspectives, and we want you guys to see different, um, you know, see different ways of answering these questions. But... Essentially, what you need to understand about the centroid, and this is very critical, the distance from A to P, right? And if we and if we had more time in this week, I would probably have you like sit down and actually measure these things, but we don't have time. So we'll just go ahead and tell you and spoil it for you. If I want to know the distance from A to P, I have to remember that this distance is double whatever the side from P to the side is. So from my vertex to my centroid, this distance is double whatever this side is from the center to that side. So AP is double whatever PE is, okay? Another way you can think about it is kind of the reverse of that. This is half the distance of this. So PE is half of the distance of AP. Um, you can also think about it in terms of like looking at the entire median. The entire median, right, is this whole length right here, and AP would essentially be two-thirds of the whole thing. Same thing with PE. PE, when compared to the entire length of the median, PE is one-third of that entire length. All right? I don't use these three as much. Maybe your teachers will, but I know personally when I teach my students, I'm going to use this one the most. All right? So let's kind of explore a few problems with that. These problems aren't going to take too long. So let's just kind of get through it. So if P is the centroid, and again, I'm going to go ahead and underline that every time I read these problems, okay? Make sure that you know the difference between centroid. And I always do this too. If I, if I have centroid there, I always just say, okay, centroid is medians. Centroid is medians. Or if I do circumcenter, that's going to be a different type of um, thing. Or, you know, if I have... Um, ortho center or you know just all the different ones just know which um, what properties create those centers of the triangle so if p is the centroid which is created by the medians of triangle um, jkl jk is 22 so you're saying this entire length right here is 22 kn this length right here is 13 and ol this length right here is 18 okay so, all right. So if I know if I know that, what I can go ahead and do is I can go ahead and just find each missing side. So this one isn't really focused so much on the centroid. I mean, they told you the centroid, so I know that these points are the middle. So I should I should know that this is the same as that, this is the same as that, and this is the same as that, right? Um, but you know, we're just gonna go ahead and get acquainted with the idea of medians. So. Km, that's this that's this distance right here from K to here. Well, I know if the whole thing is 22, then that can be split up um, over here as 11 and 11. So Km is 11. And NL, that's over here. So again, if I know that this is the, the middle of that side, then this is equal to that. So if this is 13, then so is NL. 
Here I have KL, that's the whole distance, so that's basically 13 twice, which is 26. Here I have JO, I gotta remember this side is congruent to that side, so 18 over here. And then of course the whole distance is 18 two times, which is 36. All right, started, we started you off a little bit easier. All right, we'll get a little bit harder as we go along, but nothing too crazy. Don't need the first page again. So, now if I look at this example, it says if J is the centroid, I'm gonna underline that and put median. And I do, you'll, you know, if my students will see me do this all the time. I always underline my center and say how it was created. So, um, triangle DEF is, uh, no. Yeah, this, this is the center of the triangle DEF, and they're saying that DH, this entire length, is 51. Now, this is where it's really useful to keep that in mind, that the distance from the vertex to the center is double whatever that distance is. So this is what I like to do, and I highly suggest you do the same. So again, from here to J, it's going to be double whatever this is, okay? Okay. So if you think about it, if I cut this in half, it's almost like from here to there, I have three equal parts to that triangle, right? So if I have three equal parts, well, why don't I just divide the entire length by three? If I get 51 divided by three, I get 17, right? So if 17 is, you know, the whole length in thirds, right? So I can go ahead and, break, and write this out as 17, 17, and 17, okay? It just, I, I promise you it's going to make life a lot easier. So when they ask me over here, like, what is DJ? Well, DJ, that's just 17 twice, which is 34. And JH, that's 17. And I just made that problem really simple, and I only had to do one division. All right. So let's go ahead and kind of use that same concept for the rest of them. I know that GF is equal to 60, so this entire length is 60. So if I broke that up into three equal parts, well... 60 divided by 3 is 20, so that'll be 20, 20, and 20. And now it'll be really easy to answer all these questions. GJ, from G to J, that distance is just 20. From J to F, you here I have 22 times, so I'm just going to put 40 right there. And then when it comes to EI, again, that's the entire length of the median. So 57 divided by 3, if I broke this up into three equal parts... I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, brain fart, 57 divided by 3 is 19. So I'm going to put 19, 19, and 19. Okay? So I know that the distance from E to J is 19 two times, which is 38. And the distance from J to I is simply 19. Okay? Now this last example is kind of putting it all together. It says, if G is the centroid of triangle ABC... And BF, so this entire length is 72. I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of work with that. If I know that the entire length is 72, I can break that into three equal parts. So 72 divided by 3 is 24. So I'll put 24 there, 24 there, and 24 there. That's kind of hard to see. I'll, hopefully I remember that that is 24. And then they say that AC, so now they gave us like the length of a side. AC is 64. So again... If I'm dealing with a centroid, I always have to remember that that's the medians, right? So if this is the median, I can break this pretty much the same there and there. So I have that. And then GE, so they're saying that this right here is 27. Okay? So let's see what we can figure out here. Um, first of all, if I know that GE is 27, remember, the distance from the center to the side of the triangle, right, that's going to basically be one third of the whole thing. Or you can just kind of, you'll, if, you, if you notice the pattern, what we're doing with the other part of that triangle from the center to the vertex, we're just getting this and writing it twice over there. So that's what I'm going to do. This side is double whatever that side is. So if it's double, then I can just write 27 and fill that in there two times. All right. So I know it's a little bit sloppy. Hopefully you guys can see that pretty well. Let me zoom in just a little bit. Okay. So now, if I go ahead and answer these questions, so if I want to know the length of AF, well, let's see, AF is this. So remember, this is going to be um, congruent to this side. So if the whole thing is 64, then each of those is 32. And so is FC. All right. Then BG, that's the length from the vertex to here. So 24 twice is 48. From GF, 
oh, G to F, no, wait, right here, sorry. From G to F, that's going to be 24 right there. I've lost track of where my letters are at. And then from A, G, so from A to G, that's 27 two times. So that's going to be 54. And then from A to E, that's the length of the whole thing. So 27 times 3 is 81. All right. So again, it, this, these problems can be really straightforward just so long as you remember that, you know, one thing is double the other and that the centroid is created by the medians. So hopefully you found that helpful. And if you have any questions, go ahead and ask your teacher. And if not, just go ahead and get started on your problem set. Take care.